Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to continue with the Bhagavad Gita series. I'll just check uh, if the mic is connected. Yes. All right. So today we are going to start with one of the most famous verses from the Bhagavad Gita. In fact, this is one of the top 108 verses. Every verse of the Gita is very important and potent. At the same time, there are some special verses which give us more insights on how to apply the principles of the Gita in our daily life. And today we have reached one such verse. It is the second chapter, seventh verse. And this is the verse which teaches us how should we surrender to the universe? Because now, in this verse, Arjuna is going to do something. Okay. So what he's going to do, let us see. So let us read the verse as usual. And then we will read the translation and then the purport. Okay. So this is a very famous verse. Kalpanya dosho pahata swabhava pritchwa mitwam dharma sammurha cheta. So the translation is as follows. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. Arjuna is telling this to whom? To Krishna, of course. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Wow. So finally, Arjuna has raised his hands. He's like, I'm surrendering. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. And that's his greatness that he has surrendered before Krishna. He knows his predicament. That is, that is why he's a great soul. He knows that he's in a precarious state and he has surrendered to Krishna. Okay. And if you have seen the videos before this, then you will know in the earlier verses that Arjuna even gives such extreme statements like better than killing them is I stay by begging. Okay. That is what he says. So he's in a very precarious state. He doesn't want to kill all the people who have assembled in the side of the Kurus. But he knows that that is his duty as a Chatri. I should do it. But he says that I have lost all my composure because of miserly weakness. And now we will see the purport. All right. And yes, if you have not watched the other videos in this playlist, then please watch. Otherwise, you may be clueless about what is going on. And if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life, then you can go down to my description section where you will find the link to my website. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you don't have to find him. You will see him speaking, not in this verse, in the next. Okay. All right, the purport. By nature's own way, the complete system of material activities is a source of perplexity for everyone. By nature's way. Wow. In every step, there is perplexity. And therefore, it behooves one to approach a bona fide spiritual master. Who can give one proper guidance for executing the purpose of life. So there's a statement made here. In every step, there is perplexity. So there is a shloka which says this. Where does it say? The shloka is padam padam yad vipadam natesham. If you know where this shloka is mentioned, then please write it in the comments. If you don't know, then tell me. I will tell you. <laughs> Some homework for you. Okay. In every step, there is danger. I mean perplexity. And there is, and therefore it behooves one to approach a bona fide spiritual master who can give one proper guidance for executing the purpose of life. So most of the times what happens is people are doing so many activities, but they are clueless about what is the purpose of life. 
where they are going, what they are doing, why they are doing this. They don't know. So to know that what we should do, we should approach a bona fide spiritual master, a bona fide guru. He, only, only the guru can tell us what is the purpose of life. All Vedic scriptures, literatures, advise us to approach a bona fide spiritual master to get free from the perplexities of life, which happen without our desire. These perplexities happen without our desire, you see. Perplexities means complications, problems basically. So nobody desires problems, but it comes of its own accord, you see. So they are like a forest fire that somehow blazes without being set by anyone. Similarly, the world situation is such that the perplexities of life automatically appear without our wanting such confusion. There you go, automatic. No one wants fire and yet it takes place and we become perplexed. Fire basically here refers to desires, okay uncontrolled materialistic desires. The Vedic wisdom therefore advises that in order to solve the perplexities of life and to understand the signs of the solution, one must approach a spiritual master who is in the disciplic succession. A person without a bona fide spiritual master is supposed to, a person with a bona fide spiritual master is supposed to know everything. One should not therefore remain in material perplexities, but should approach a spiritual master. This is the purport of this verse. That means the conclusion is we need to approach an authorized guru for this. Who is the man in material perplexities? It is he who does not understand the problems of life. In the Brihat Aranyaka Upanishad, 3.8.10 The perplexed man is described as follows Yova etat aksharam gargi avidhita smal lokat prayati sa kripanaha. Kripana is used. <laughs> he is a miserly man who does not solve the problems of life as a human and who thus quits his world like the cats and dogs without understanding the signs of self-realization. So basically it said, this means that one who does not solve the problems of life, life and death basically, and one who lives like animals, he, he's basically like an animal. It said the word Kripana is used, okay. This human form of life is most valuable, is a most valuable asset for the living entity who can utilize it for solving the problems of life. So now this does not mean, uh, solving the problems of life does not mean that uh, we solve the uh, problem of hunger or thirst or anything like that. As in Hindi they say, na, roti makan. when we say life, this is referring to uh, problems of uh, the material existence in general, which means trying to find uh, a spiritual solution for material problems, which means trying to look beha beyond matter and trying to elevate our consciousness spiritually. That's what it means, okay. And this human form of life is most valuable because only in human form of life we can inquire about God. Athato Brahma Jigyasa. You will, you will never find any animal talking about uh, spirituality or religion, okay. It's... It is only a uh, characteristic of the humans. Only humans can inquire about God. Animals cannot. Therefore, we should utilize this human body because every body has a specific purpose. What is the purpose of the uh, tiger or lion's body? The purpose of the tiger or lion is to eat a uh, flesh because that's what he does all the time. And What's the purpose of humans? Humans' purpose is to inquire about God. Of course, that does not mean that we do not take care of our body. We uh, let it loose. It means that we do whatever is required, the bare minimum, to keep our uh, body and soul together. We earn money, we have a family. And apart from that, the most of the time is spent in spiritual inquiry and reading scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita. 
Now you see that Kripala word will come here. Therefore, one who does not utilize this opportunity properly is a miser. Kripana means miser. Okay. Why is he why is he considered to be a miser? Because he is not utilizing his greatest greatest gift. Okay. That's why he's a miser. On the other hand, there, there is the Brahmana or he who is intelligent enough to utilize this body to solve all the problems of life. Ya etat aksharam gargi vidhi vatsalam lokat prayati sa brahmana. Now, when the word brahmana is used here, it does not mean uh, anybody who is from a Brahmin family or a Brahmin caste. Okay. Brahma janeti ti brahmin. That's what is the definition of a brahmana. One who is focused in spiritual knowledge, he is a brahmin. So anybody can be a brahmin. Okay. It does not mean that somebody has to be born in a no, Goswami family, Sharma or Bharadwaj or any, any such fancy families. Because Krishna says in the Gita that Chatur Varnya Maya system Guna Karma Bhagasha that uh, the caste system is divided in the basis of karma. Okay, Guna and Karma. Krishna does not say Janma Karma Vibhagasha. It, it means that by Janma, by birth, nobody is a Brahmana. Or a chatriya, okay, by one's actions, by guna and karma, qualities and actions. And who is a Brahmana? Brahma Jani Titi Brahmin. One who is focused on Brahman, which is spiritual knowledge. That's the definition of a Brahmana. And he who is intelligent enough to utilize this body to solve all the problems of life. Therefore, a Brahmana is not a miser. The Kripanas or miserly persons waste their time in being overly affectionate for family, society, country, etc. in the material conception of life. One is often attached to family life, namely to wife, children and other members on the basis of skin disease. Wow. The Kripana thinks that he is able to protect his family members from death or the Kripana thinks that his family or society can save him from the verge of death. Such family attachment can be found even in the lower animals who, who take care of children also. Being intelligent, Arjuna could understand that his affection for his family members and his wish to protect them from death were the causes of his perplexities. Although he could understand that his duty to fight was awaiting him, still on account of miserly weakness, he could not discharge his duties. He is therefore asking Lord Krishna, the Supreme Spiritual Master, to make a definite solution. He offers himself to Krishna as a disciple. He wants to stop friendly talks. There you go. <laughs> no friendly talks. <laughs> why, why is it said friendly talks? Because before this verse, Krishna and Arjuna are just talking like friends. You know, they are just talking as if, uh, yeah, we are here. We are here to fight. We, do, we are going to do something here. Something interesting is going to happen. But now, Arjuna is telling him that no, no more friendly talks. It's a serious business now. You are my guru and I am your disciple. Talks between the master and the disciple are serious. Serious. And now Arjuna wants to talk very seriously before the recognized spiritual master. Who is that spiritual master? He's Krishna himself. Krishna is therefore the original spiritual master of the science of Bhagavad Gita and Arjuna is the first disciple of understanding the Gita. Arjuna is the first of course. How Arjuna understands the Bhagavad Gita is stated in the Gita itself. And yet foolish mundane scholars explain that one need not submit to Krishna as a person but to the unborn within Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna's within and without. And one who has no one who has no sense of understanding is the greatest fool in trying to sorry, and one who has no sense of this understanding 
is the greatest fool in trying to understand Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so basically, one who thinks that uh, there is some unborn within Krishna to who we should surrender that's nonsense. We should surrender to Krishna Himself. Okay, there you go. So, the point which is stressed here is about family, society, country, and all this. The name which is given is skin disease, which means we all have different identities. Like we may do education, we may have education from a particular university, we may be working in a particular company, or we may have our own business, we may have a passport of a particular country, but all these identities are temporary. Now, it's not bad to have these identities, but we have to understand that these are temporary identities, which I'm having in this life. Okay, so tomorrow, like, uh, tomorrow I may be born in Australia. So, I mean, in my next life. So then I will have an Australian passport. So in the next to next life, I may be born somewhere in America. So I may have an American passport that time. Okay, but there is one thing which does not change. What is that? That is me, myself, because I am not this body. I am spirit soul. That is irrespective of where I am born, what I am doing, what is my gender, am I born in Asia or am I born in Antarctica or wherever. What, whatever I am doing, I am a painter or a YouTuber or a computer engineer or a mathematician or a physicist. So one who tries to solve this problem of life, which means one who tries to understand that I am going on taking birth again and again in this material world. And there is a time when this needs to stop. Okay. So one who understands this is actually a Brahmana. Okay. So one who inquires about spiritual knowledge, one who does spiritual practices, one who elevates himself, he is a Brahmana. And by that, you will know how to surrender to the universe. Otherwise, you will just be roaming headlessly without knowing anything. That's what happens. People have so much these days so many material possessions much more than our parents and our, our, our grand grandparents had hmm? but still the lives of people they are so empty why because they do not approach a bona fide authorized spiritual master so the importance of approaching a guru is stressed here okay and from my personal experience also i can say whatever very little uh, knowledge or spiritual <laughs> advancement I have made that is only by the association and the blessings of my gurus and my senior God brothers without them their association their blessings their prayers I would have been nowhere even if everything was there in my life even then I would have been nowhere but because they blessed therefore I could gain maybe some <laughs> Uh, spiritual knowledge not wisdom I would say that's very far but nonetheless the point here is that Arjuna has set the trend okay so if you if we want to uh, learn the Gita just by reading the Gita it will not happen just by uh, listening it will not happen okay we have to know what in in which context the Gita has to be studied okay and for that we must approach a bona fide guru authorized guru and many times people ask this that oh how should i pro where should i find a bona fide guru well uh, the story of dhruva maharaj is there in the shrimad bhagavatam okay so dhruva maharaj he also wanted to find god and then lord vishnu had sent narad muni to enlighten him and this mantra was given to him om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so if you have this sincere desire to search and look for God, then God himself will send a guru to our life. Okay, so in short, it is in a way not our duty to find a guru. Our duty is to have that sincere uh, prayers and sincere desire. Desire is the most important thing in spiritual life. If we have the, the desire, then that's it. Job is done. <laughs> okay, the guru will personally come to your life you don't have to go and find a guru that's not uh, needed okay so this is when you find the guru then he will enlighten you in spiritual knowledge and by that you can surrender to the universe okay and to god and to krishna so otherwise 
our lives will be like this miserly man who is just running behind things of this material world all right so this does not mean that uh, we do not marry or we do not uh, earn money it does not mean that it means that we do whatever is required whatever is necessary and then the prime focus of our life is in cultivating spiritual wisdom all right so there you go that is it from my side uh, if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know how to surrender to the universe and god is there with you all the time just look to him you will find him and yes if you want a consultation from me then please go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website okay thank you very much see you soon again bye bye